Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to discuss the difference between expanding and simplifying. And then we're going to talk about solving. So you might see a question that says expand and simplify. Now, I'm using a new program here, so just bear with me with the handwriting. So if you have a statement that is made up of a couple simple polynomials, so we've got a couple binomials here and we're been asked to expand and simplify and I can even let's tack on a third one let's tack on a third one we'll do uh, x minus 5 and we've been asked to expand and simplify well the word expand means to get bigger um, and then the word simplify means to get smaller so we're you know going to ask to make it bigger and then make our answer from the bigger part simpler or smaller so it's kind of weird it's not that intuitive to get get uh, more complicated and then get simpler. But it means do the math. So what we have here is we have a brackets being multiplied. So we've got a multiplication here and we've got a multiplication up in here. So that's exactly what we're going to do, but we're not going to do them at the same time. We're going to do them one at, one at a time and you get to pick. You get to pick if you want to multiply bracket number one times bracket number two or if you'd want to multiply bracket number two times bracket number three first. I always just move from left to right so I'm going to start with the first two and so let's multiply x times x is x squared x times three is three x negative two times x is negative two x and negative two times three is negative six. Now because all of this the first bracket and the second bracket is supposed to be multiplied times the third bracket we have to keep this together it's a package it's a package deal and then this is all still being multiplied times x minus 5 so let's simplify the inside bracket because what would you rather do multiply four things times this or only multiply three things times this I'd rather do three so what we actually have in this bracket is x squared, let me redo that, is x squared, and then we've got a single x because 3 take away 2 is 1, and then negative 6. And this is going to be much nicer to then multiply times this bracket here. And so we end up with x to the power of 3 minus 5x squared plus x squared minus 5x minus 6x and negative 6 times negative 5 is positive 30. This is the expansion. This is the complicated part. We went from a fairly simple statement nicely grouped with brackets to a much more complicated polynomial and the reason why it's not considered simple is because we have like terms. We've got two x squareds here and we've got an x and an x here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add all those up nicely combining our like terms. So we have x to the power of 3, we have negative 4x squared, and then we have negative 11x and we have 30 on the end. And that's as simple as we can get. So the steps again, expand, multiply, keeping them together. You can only multiply a single pair at a time. You can't multiply all three at once. That would get, get too complicated. And then simplify your life inside the bracket just to take a peek here at what we did. We've got a like term here, so we combined those like terms to get to just the single x. And then we multiplied back out again, which gave us the longer polynomial, which we simplified by collecting these like terms. And there we have one long polynomial. Now, unless you're in a higher grade in Ontario, that would be grade 12, you wouldn't know how to factor this particular polynomial to get back to the original statement. Um, we will learn that in the advanced functions, the MHF for you. Now let's contrast, let's compare expanding and simplifying to
to solving. And whoops. So what if we had uh, a question that said to solve and we were given a polynomial. Um, we might be given a polynomial that is in some sort of quadratic form in which case we would have to either factor it or use uh, the quadratic equation sometimes also called the quadratic formula uh, or, or a couple other methods that you could do. Um, now that's a little bit above and beyond what I want to talk about right now. So let's take our original polynomial here. Whenever you've got a solve statement, it's usually equal to something. Well, actually, it's not usually equal to something. It's always equal to a number. And we like to go back to zero because then we're, we're, we're finding the roots of the equation. It's very easy to solve when things are equal to zero. So let's take our example x minus 2, x plus 3, x minus 5. And if this was the original question, you can't just add on equals 0. You don't know for sure that it does equal 0. So if the question given to you does not have equals anything, then you can't solve it. It's not an equation, it's an expression. You can only solve equations. Maybe I should write that down. You can only solve equations. And what's the difference between an equation and an expression? Equations have equal signs. Equal equation. So the nice thing about this is what we have is we have a multiplication. We have a multiplication of something, let's call that question mark, times something else, let's call that a square, times something else. Let's call that a triangle. And what do we know about multiplication when it comes to having an answer of zero? There's only one way to multiply to zero, and that's that something, at least one of the things in this set of numbers, has to be zero. If we think about other possible number combinations, uh, if this was 13 times 12 times 0. That would give us 0. And one of these three numbers has to be 0. It could be 12 times 0 times 13. It could be 0 times 0 times 0. Any of these things will equal to 0. So one or more of those items is equal to 0. And that's really important. Because what that tells us is that we've got either the x minus 2, which is the first bracket, either that is the number 0, or x plus 3 is, is 0, or x minus 5 is 0. Because if we multiply 0 times any of this, we get 0. If we multiply this times 0 times this, we get 0. And if we multiply any of this times 0, we get 0. And so we're going to individually solve those, which is really easy to do. We're going to add 2 to both sides. We're going to subtract 3 to both sides. And we're going to add 5 to both sides. And therefore, we have three solutions to this one. So you can see that there's a massive difference between expand and simplify and solve. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me at the email address you see in the videos. Thanks for watching.